Now, if you're the on-call doctor overnight, one of the most common things you'll be asked to do is prescribe sleeping aids because hospitals are noisy, cramped, busy, generally not very conducive to a good night's sleep at all, which can in turn affect recovery. And completely understandably, patients often ask for help sleeping. And one of the agents that people commonly ask for is melatonin, especially if they're originally from the US or Europe, where it's readily available to buy in most any pharmacy or drugstore very cheaply. But it's actually very hard to get hold of in the UK and very rarely prescribed. So I thought it would be interesting just for this video to talk a bit about melatonin, what it is, how it works, and why you can't get hold of it in the UK really, even if you're used to taking it very regularly. So what actually is it? Well, Fundamentally, melatonin is a sleep hormone. It's a hypnotic agent that is naturally produced by the pineal gland in the brain, primarily in response to darkness. So it's a light sensitive organ. And it plays a key role in regulating the body's internal clock by signaling when it's time to sleep and then when it's time to wake up, when the sun comes up and there's more light. And as daylight fades, the pineal gland actually ramps up melatonin production, which then helps lower body temperature, reduce our alertness and basically prepares us for rest to get that good night's sleep. Exposure to bright light, on the other hand, especially in the morning, suppresses melatonin secretion, which signals to the body to become more awake, more alert, ready to start the day. Because of this influence on our sleep cycles, Melatonin is commonly taken as a supplement to help manage issues such as insomnia, jet lag, other reasons why someone might have a disrupted sleep pattern. So why is it so tough? Well, as with many things in life, things become more complicated because of regulation, and specifically in the UK, that is the Medicines and Healthcare Products Regulatory Agency, or the MHRA. The MHRA regulates all medicines, medical devices, and blood components for transfusion in the UK, which for doctors means that ultimately we are interacting with the things the MHRA says and does probably every day we go to work. And this is the real clincher. The really important thing is that in the UK, melatonin is a medicine, and beyond that, it is a prescription only medicine, not a supplement as it is in many other countries including the United States. So this bottle here, this is made by a company called Spring Valley, and you will notice on the bottle, it is labeled as a dietary supplement. What that means in terms of United States law is that it is governed by a very different set of rules than those which govern medicines and drugs. And because it's prescription only, I've got one here uh, from a Bangladeshi pharmacy that looks a lot more like a medical product than these two, which look a bit more appealing like dietary supplements. If a medicine is prescription only, that means that you can't buy it like you could paracetamol, laxatives, even stronger painkillers like dihydrocodeine that you can buy over the counter, prescription only medicines have to be prescribed by someone with prescribing powers, whether that is a doctor, all of whom have prescribing powers, prescribing nurses, or somebody else. This is not the same to be noted as a controlled substance like methadone or cocaine, which have very specific set of laws governing them. And to go into that a bit further, a controlled substance is a specific type of prescription-only medicine that carries additional legal restrictions due to potential for misuse, harm, dependence. They are regulated under the Misuse of Drugs Act 1971, which dictates the specific rules around storage, record keeping, distribution. They are much, much more tightly managed. So while both prescription only medicines and then this subset controlled substances, both of them always have to be prescribed. Controlled substances have far stricter controls and oversight because of their higher risk profile and melatonin does not fall into that category. The second part of this puzzle is evidence and licensing. So in the UK, we normally work at the behest of NICE, the National Institute for Health and Care Excellence, who set the standards and guidelines for most medical treatments. And melatonin in the UK 
is only recommended for jet lag for five days of prescription or short-term treatment of insomnia in adults over the age of 55 or insomnia in patients with learning disabilities and behavior that challenges. So there are a few very specific use cases for which it can be prescribed, but to go beyond those use cases, say for regular sleep aid or for long-term use, is essentially stepping outside of those licensed indications for prescribing melatonin, and the prescriber, someone like me, would need to justify our actions very carefully if anything went wrong. What does that mean for patients in the UK? Well, it means that either in the hospital or in the community, if you're struggling to sleep, you are more likely to be given sleep hygiene or lifestyle advice in the first instance, and then potentially one of the Z drugs, such as uh, Zopiclone or Zolpidem, which are a very different type of sedative hypnotic, but again, prescription only, short-term use. But if someone is struggling to sleep in hospital, in my experience, most commonly they would have one or two nights of Zopiclone. But that brings us to the third part of this video, uh, talking about melatonin, which is how do people acquire it? Because clearly people do, but not many people will be eligible for prescriptions for it. So how is everyone getting hold of it? And the simplest way is that people bring it back with them from traveling abroad for personal use. As we said before, it's not a controlled substance. So there is absolutely nothing stopping you traveling to a country where it can be purchased. And I've been to many like the US, Italy, Germany, you can readily buy it. Bangladesh from when I was there over Christmas. There is nothing stopping you picking some up putting it in your bag, bringing it back with you, and then consuming it in the UK. And loads of people do this. I do this. I find it very helpful for sleeping and I buy a box whenever I go abroad. It should go without saying though, that traveling with very large amounts of any drug in your luggage is very likely to arouse more suspicion and interest than a box or two that are clearly for personal use and not for selling or supply to somebody else. But here is finally where we need to be a bit cautious because the other way that people typically acquire melatonin is by ordering it from online pharmacies, which are themselves registered and based outside the UK. And like with any less regulated space, here can be danger. There is no guarantee that what you are paying for is actually in the pills that arrive in the post, whether dose are accurate, whether the release times are what they're supposed to be or what the box says they are. There's no guarantee that the medicines have been prepared, stored, transported correctly, and this may have consequences for safety and effectiveness when it comes to actually taking it. So basically all I'm trying to get at, just like with any medication or medical product that is ordered online, if you choose to do this, which I do not advise you do, be very, very careful and only buy medicines and supplements from reputable sources. So thank you very much for watching, guys. I hope that's been quite interesting. It's something I get asked a lot, actually, by patients who can't have their melatonin in hospital. So I thought I would do a bit of a deep dive as to why. So thank you very, very much for watching. Be sure to hit that like button for me, leave a comment, subscribe. If there are other medicines and drugs that you'd like me to talk about here on the channel, please do let me know and I'll be happy to oblige. Take care and I'll see you next time.